Today we're gonna play Mad Scientist. If you remember a few weeks back, I made a video about the Cheerson CX-31. It's sort of a UFO style quadcopter, and it's an awful lot of fun, and it's really nice to look at. But in my review, I talked about how it has two kind of fatal flaws, at least mine did. One is that giant plastic UFO shell, which while it looks very cool, adds an awful lot of weight, which means that it can't fly very well in the wind. And the other issue that I had with it, which may have just been an issue with mine, is the range. So once it would get about 10 meters, about 25 to 30 feet away from me, it would just drop out of the air. So I decided to do a little bit of tinkering with it, and I thought I'd walk you through the process. This is by no means intended to be a tutorial or anything, so if you do try this at home, don't blame me if you screw something up. So what I decided to do was just go ahead and take the CX-31 apart and see what makes it tick, and several weeks back, I actually 3D printed a small quadcopter frame. Quite a few of you guys have been asking me to do that, so I went ahead and did it, and I didn't have anything to do with the frame until I realized that these motors were about the same size. So let's go ahead and disassemble the CX-31. So to take apart the CX-31, you first flip it over, you'll find that there are four screws in the bottom. You just very quickly take those out with a small screwdriver. And you're not actually able to take the canopy off quite yet. Every single LED around the device has a little plastic clip over it you have to remove first. They do come off pretty easily. I just pulled them off with my fingernails. And there are eight of those. Then you'll notice there are clips holding the top and the bottom of the UFO canopy together. So just very gently pry those apart and the top should come off. And inside of it, you'll see what actually makes it tick. You have a very small flight controller board. It has the four motors around it and that's about it. It's probably good to go ahead and take off those rubber motor mounts because you're not going to be needing them if you're going to take the motors out. So at that point, I went ahead and clamped the CX-31 into my new little soldering station that I picked up over on Amazon. I'll have a link to that down in the video description if you want to check it out. And I ended up first taking the motors off and then putting them back on once they were taken out of the frame. So in order to do that, I had to heat up the solder, pull the wires out, actually dislodge the motor from it, which in this case, I took sort of a flathead screwdriver and pried around it very gently and gave it a little pressure from the bottom and it just popped right out. The reason I had to do all this is because the wiring for the motors actually goes down below the frame, up through a small channel, back into the body. Sort of a really weird design. So I went ahead and just re-soldered it back to the board, making sure to put the wires back exactly where they're supposed to be. So I did them just one at a time. I'm not going to show you the process for all four of them because it was the same process over and over again. And while I was at it, I went ahead and heated up the solder and removed the LEDs that go around the UFO canopy, because at this point it gives you an extra set of LEDs, just in case. But anyway, once you have all four motors removed from the frame and attached back to that flight controller board, you simply remove two screws from the board and it pops up. And then the power connector is held in place by two more screws, so you take those out and it comes loose as well. And then you are entirely freed from that UFO canopy. So at that point, I went ahead and brought in my little pink quadcopter frame. And unfortunately, when I printed out the quadcopter frame, I, like I said, I didn't know what I was gonna be using this with. So the motors didn't quite fit into the frame. The first one fit, kind of. I had to give it a little bit of pressure, but I noticed there was immediately going to be a problem with it. Because the motors were just a little bit too big, every one that I got in managed to crack the motor mounts. So there was immediately a problem I knew it was going to have. But I went ahead and tried it anyway. And to get the other three in, I actually took a file and, I, and worked around the inside of the little motor mounts before trying to put the motors in just to give it a little bit of extra wiggle room. But after all of that was said and done, I had four motors in place, I put the board in it, and because I knew this wasn't going to be a long-term solution, I used an awful lot of electrical tape instead of using mounts or, or cutting the wires or anything to make it all fit properly. So I used electrical tape on the bottom to hold all the wiring in place. I used electrical tape across the top to hold the board in place. I even used electrical tape to hold the battery on it. But as you can see here, it all went together. It looked kind of like a quadcopter. A little bit strange due to the props, but still, it looks like a quadcopter. So of course, what was next, I had to try it out. So I plugged up the battery, I turned on the controller. As you may remember from the CX-31 video, it does automatically pair. So it did automatically pair in this case. And I gave it a little throttle and the motor spun up. So I knew that I was pretty close. So I repositioned my camera, I got it all ready to go, and I took flight. And unfortunately, as you can see, it was a bit of a rough flight. I kept it up in the air for about 45 seconds. It was just really wobbly and it didn't respond quite how I wanted it to. I'm thinking it had to do with all the cracks in the motor mounts and the fact that the frame was kind of thin and kind of light. But in the middle of the video section there, you can see it kind of stabilized a little bit. And I did manage to land it successfully. And when I set all this up, I used the 500 milliamp hour battery that came with the CX-31. And then off camera, I tried it again with a 200 milliamp hour battery that came with my SEMA X11, just to see if that little bit of weight difference might make a difference, but it was still just really wobbly and really frail. And unfortunately, after that second flight, I must have landed wrong or I may have bumped into something because one of the motor mounts actually sheared off. And with a light bit of pressure, all three of the other ones came off as well. I just barely pulled on them and they came loose. So I think the problem that I had with this one in particular was that I didn't use enough fill in it. The walls were not thick enough and sturdy enough. So I'm going to try printing it again at a thicker volume, maybe even try it at a slightly larger size just to make it easier to fit the motors in there. And actually, after the fact, once I sheared off all the motors, I went back and I took a 
drill to it and I was gonna try to poke a hole through this to see if I could fit the motor in so that it would be a little bit more even so that it would distribute the weight a little bit better but that didn't work out particularly well a drill plus layered plastic like this it just kind of chewed through it so not the best option but this does give me the opportunity to reprint it and not use paint this time so I'm gonna be giving that another shot I've tried printing it in ABS a couple of times now and unfortunately the ABS just warps every time I try to do it because it is such a large frame but still I thought it was kind of cool the fact that I was able to take an existing quadcopter that was fun but was not entirely usable outdoors and at least for a few moments turn it into something entirely different. But that's going to be about all from me for today. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up down below the video. Let's me know that this is the kind of videos that you like. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, there's also a subscribe button down there you can hit. I may even put a link on the screen somewhere. Thank you guys so much for watching though and I will see you again next time.